the United States has had more than 6.3 million confirmed cases of COVID-19. And while transmission rates have declined from their peak in July, there are still new hotspots popping up all over the country, most recently on newly reopened college campuses. Across the country, more universities temporarily switching to virtual learning, with only some students staying on campus, as college towns around the country are quickly becoming epicenters for the virus. In Georgia, Mississippi, and Utah, thousands of students and hundreds of teachers have recently been asked to quarantine. Many universities are taking drastic action to ensure that students, teachers, and staff, that they're safe all along the way. And one of the harshest punishments imposed to date, 11 first-year students at Boston's North Northeastern University were dismissed and declined a refund for their $36,000 plus dollar tuition after crowding together in a hotel room. That's right. Some schools are kicking out students for partying, but keeping their tuition, which is insane. I mean, if you waste 36 grand on college, you should at least leave with a communications degree. And I do hope colleges get all these outbreaks under control soon because Going to college remotely is just not the same. There are so many things about the college experience that only work if you're there in person. I mean, imagine, imagine trying to do a frat hazing on Zoom. Now grab your bottle of hot sauce from your fridge and chug it. Uh, I don't have hot sauce, but I have apricot LaCroix. I can chug that. Yeah, you're damn right you'll chug it. Get ready to feel refreshed, bitch. Anyway, uh, if you're a high school senior right now, there is only one thing you should be looking for when applying to colleges. Find out which schools avoided coronavirus outbreaks and do not apply there. Most people do not know how to party. So this is just one more reason that we really can't have a vaccine soon enough. But another problem is that we also can't get one too soon. The latest CBS News poll finds the majority of Americans are skeptical about a vaccine. 65% say if one became available this year, they'd consider it rushed. And 58% say they would consider getting one, but but wait to see what happens. Kamala Harris was asked if she would trust a Trump administration vaccine. It would have to be a credible source of information that talks about the um, the efficacy and the and the reliability of whatever he's talking about. I will not take his word for it. He wants us to inject bleach. I, no, I will not take his word. Look, I get why people are skeptical. There are a lot of things where I'll take Trump's recommendation. How to write an NDA, how to do the smooth criminal lead, where the set of stairs are too slippery. But vaccines is not one of his areas of expertise. Like, you don't want Trump involved in this deal. It's like going on Shark Tank and getting an offer from Robert. Yeah, you're just gonna be like, any other offers? <laughs> Mark, uh, Laurie? You know what, I'm, I'm good, guys. I'm just gonna go bankrupt. Thanks, thanks though, Robert, thanks for that. Either way, it's cute how people think it'll be up to them whether they get Trump's vaccine. Guys, it's gonna be up to Trump. And knowing him, he's gonna turn it into a quid pro quo. I'll give you one shot for one piece of dirt on Joe Biden. Huh? What do you say? What do you say? And let's be honest, this skepticism isn't just coming out of nowhere. President Trump has given people pretty good reasons to think that his timeline might not be based strictly on the science. During a Labor Day news conference that sounded more like a rally from the White House grounds, President Trump was all but giving away his own October surprise, suggesting there will be a coronavirus vaccine ready by Election Day. You could have a very big surprise coming up. So we're going to have a vaccine very soon, maybe even before a very special date. You know what date I'm talking about. Why is he talking about Election Day like it's a weird sex innuendo? You know what date I'm talking about. Gonna stick your big hard vote in that ballot box. Just put it right in. I mean, obviously we know what date he's talking about. What other date would Trump possibly remember besides election day? His kids' birthdays, his anniversary, a date from a history book, trick question. He doesn't know any of those things. But this is why people are skeptical. Trump keeps talking about this vaccine as if the goal is to get it out before election day. And any normal president would at least pretend that the vaccine will be released based on science, but Trump doesn't even pretend. Guy's got the worst poker face in the world, which is why he would probably be the best and worst person to play poker with. Yeah, you'd always know when he was bluffing, so you'd probably beat him, but then there'd also be no point because he'd never pay up. Not to mention he'd draw boobs on all the queen cards. So with Trump making everybody nervous, the companies competing to make the vaccine are actually getting together 
to try and calm all this shit down. A major development in the race to produce a coronavirus vaccine and something very unprecedented. Some of the country's most well-known drug makers now presenting a united front, saying they will not rush out a vaccine without proper testing and approval. These are some of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world. They are typically fierce competitors, but they are coming together with what they have called a historic pledge to try to shore up public confidence in a possible COVID-19 vaccine. The CEOs of nine pharmaceutical companies, including AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, and Pfizer, say they will commit to high ethical standards and sound scientific principles as they work toward developing a vaccine. The statement includes a pledge to always make the safety and well-being of vaccinated individuals our top priority. Yes, people are so skeptical about this vaccine that the drug companies had to come out and pledge that they're not going to rush things. That's how bad Trump is. He's managed to make big pharma turn into the good guys. And that's saying something. I mean, Johnson & Johnson sold talcum powder that gave people cancer. AstraZeneca and Merck had to settle fraud claims by Medicare and Medicaid Sanofi overcharged the Veteran Affairs Department. GlaxoSmithKline hid safety data from the FDA. Pfizer has that unnecessary P in it. I mean, that's unethical as shit. If I see a P followed by an F, that better be followed by a Chang's, otherwise I'm out. The point is, it is so important for people to trust that any vaccine that comes out is safe and effective before it is distributed. Because if a government rushes one out for political purposes, you get, well, Something like what's happening in Russia right now. Russia's health ministry says the first batch of its so-called Sputnik V coronavirus vaccine has been produced for use in the general population. Health officials outside Russia, however, have raised concerns that the shot was approved even before clinical testing had finished last week. It's still unproven. It still hasn't finished uh, human trials. And as we found, it's still widely distrusted. It's been made available uh, to key frontline workers like doctors and teachers. But few, if any, of those Russian teachers have actually taken up the vaccination offer. Today, it is obvious for our scientists that this vaccine forms stable immune resistance. Antibodies appear in the blood, just like in the case of my daughter, and it is harmless. My daughter feels well. Yeah, guys, of course Putin's daughter feels well. She knows the consequences if she doesn't. Hey, maybe we don't need a vaccine at all. We just need Putin to go around issuing veiled threats to anyone who thinks they've got COVID. So do you have corona? Yet I... <laughs> I feel great, Mr. President. <laughs> now, it isn't surprising that Russians are hesitant to take this unproven vaccine, but Russian national pride is on the line here, which is probably why they've started promoting this vaccine with a brand new public service announcement. Are you tired of wearing masks? Are you sick of washing hands all day? Are you afraid COVID-19 will kill you before Putin has a chance to? Then try Mother Russia's new COVID vaccine, Sputnik V, developed by same scientists who brought nation many glorious gold medals. It is guaranteed safe and effective. How do we know? Because it was tested on a bear by a scientist who was also a bear. Then we did clinical trials with many prisoners and the vaccine did not kill any of the ones who survived. And if you are coward afraid of needles, then don't worry. We will just slip it into your tea. <coughs> Sputnik 5. Take now so you can enjoy last few weeks of Russian summer. Now, you might remember, back in February and March, Donald Trump was very confidently saying that the coronavirus was not a big deal, and it was basically just like the flu. But since then, we've all learned that that was bullshit. Well, today it's come out that Trump privately knew that it was bullshit. Stunning breaking news. President Trump, in his own words, making clear he knew about the dire threat of the coronavirus very early on, at a time he repeatedly told the American people they were safe. He deliberately withheld information from the American people, repeatedly concealed details about the gravity of this threat because, in his words, he didn't want to create a panic. 
it's a very tricky situation. It's uh, indeed it goes it, is. it goes through air, Bob. That's always tougher than the touch. You know, the touch you don't have to touch things, right? But the air, you just breathe the air, and that's how it's uh, passed. Uh, it's also more deadly than your, you know, your even your strenuous flus. This is five per. You know, this is 5% versus 1% and less than 1%. You know, so this is deadly stuff. Well, I think, Bob, really, to be honest with you... Sure, I want you to I be. wanted to... Uh, I wanted to always play it down. I still like playing it down. Yes, sir. Because I don't want to create a panic. You didn't want to create a panic? You didn't want to create a panic? So what did you want? For people to very calmly be dying in the streets? <laughs> What's wrong, buddy? I'm dying. But it's chill. And also, since when is Donald J. Trump concerned about creating a panic? That is literally his favorite thing. Cities are burning, suburbs are collapsing, caravans of Antifa Mexicans are committing Muslim voter fraud. His campaign slogan is basically, look out behind you. But yes, thanks to audio tapes of interviews Trump did with Bob Woodward back in February and March, we now know that he was fully aware of how the virus was transmitted and how deadly it could be. And yet in public, he told everyone there was no reason to be afraid. And look, I get that as a leader, you don't want people to panic, but you also wanna inform the people so that they can be safe. You know, if a plane is crashing, a pilot will tell you to remain calm, but they'll also tell you to fasten your seatbelts and brace for impact. If Trump was a pilot, he'd be like, Attention all passengers, everything's fine. Seatbelts are for snowflakes. And if you want to stretch your legs, now's the perfect time. Bye-bye. Right now, pharmaceutical companies around the world are racing to develop a vaccine for coronavirus that can save countless lives and give us the freedom to freely lick park benches once again. But one major vaccine trial has just hit a major snag. Breaking news overnight, a setback in the race for a coronavirus vaccine. Pharmaceutical giant AstraZeneca pausing phase three of its global trials because of an unexplained illness in one of its volunteers. The company now has to determine whether its vaccine might cause widespread adverse reactions. You see, this is why we need vaccine trials in the first place. Because right now, one person in that trial has an unexplained illness, possibly from the prototype vaccine. But you realize if they just release this thing to the public without proper testing, we could all be out in the streets with random diseases and mutations. I mean, on the bright side, maybe some of us would develop that fireproof skin, but but still. Now, the scientists still don't know yet whether the illness is related to the vaccine trial or not. But I think I know what happened. I think what happened was coronavirus got to the vaccine and said, look, man, whatever the humans are paying you, I'll pay double. And now we gotta find a vaccine for the vaccine. Yeah, I read Facebook, I know what's going on. But let me just say that I'm incredibly grateful for all of these people who are injecting themselves with a vaccine without knowing whether it's safe because they're doing it for the rest of us. And in a way, I know how this feels. You know, it's the same way my family would make me drink the milk in the fridge to see whether or not it had gone bad. Spoiler alert, it was always bad. But until the vaccines are available, We just have to keep wearing masks and socially distancing as much as we can. Which is why in the UK, they've now decided that it's time for the British to party a little less hard. As Europe struggles with the surge in new coronavirus cases, the UK tightening restrictions. The government says social gatherings can include no more than six people instead of the previous 30 allowed. In England from Monday, we're introducing the rule of six. You must not meet socially in groups of more than six. And if you do, you will be breaking the law. Yes, starting Monday in the UK, no more than six people can socialize at a time. Six. That's a very specific number. It almost makes me think that Boris Johnson has a seventh friend that he's trying to kick out of the circle of friends. I don't understand, Boris. Why can't I hang out with the gang? Well, you you see, there were already six of us here and and scientists say that seven is COVID's favorite number. Well, what if I came early? Then I would just be the third person. Oh, no, you'll always be the seventh person, no matter what time you arrive. But look, these restrictions are better late than never because man, those Brits can party hard. 
As someone who has spent quarantine binging all of the Great British Bake Off, I'm telling you now those people are out of control. They put cocaine on everything. Here's what I don't get though. If they're worried about an outbreak in the UK, why wait until Monday to enforce this rule? Why not just tell people now to stop socializing in big groups? Because I know that if in four days I can't hang out with all my friends, well, I'll tell you what I'm doing for the next three nights. Everyone tested positive. Now, Corona isn't just canceling parties for the living, because in Los Angeles, even ghosts and goblins are now being told to stay safe. No trick-or-treating. That's what health officials in Los Angeles County are saying this morning. The Department of Public Health there is saying door-to-door for candy is just too risky this Halloween. They say it poses a higher risk for spreading coronavirus. Halloween is still more than a month away, but the department is hoping that this will give people enough time to find other ways to celebrate the holiday. They're encouraging online parties and contests and maybe some drive through activities. Oh, are you serious? Trick or treating is canceled? This is awful! So what, I'm gonna have to mail all the kids in my neighborhood razor blades? Ugh! And I'm gonna be honest, guys, I don't know if this is gonna work. First of all, I don't think nine-year-olds should be driving. That's just me, okay? And secondly, no drive through experience ever ends the way you want. Hi, I'd like a full-size Snickers, please. Okay, one bag of pennies, is that all? Uh, not pennies, candy bars. Okay, extra large bag of rusty old pennies. Pull up to the next window, please. 